we have quite the treat here for you guys today, the Panasonic GH7. There's a lot to be excited about here, and fortunately, we had some time to test this thing out. It builds off their previous GH6 series in a few important ways, especially when it comes to autofocus and internal recording options. Before we get to the demos though, let's go over some key specs. The GH7 is built around a 25.2 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, just like the GH6. And users of that camera will appreciate that it also has the same exact body dimensions, allowing you to use the same cages and rigging gear. When it comes to recording modes, Panasonic is generous as always. You can shoot up to 5.7K at 60 frames per second or DCI 4K at up to 120 frames per second in the HFR mode, that's high frame rate. You still get the ability to shoot H.264, HEVC, and ProRes 422HQ, but there's a new ability here, and that is to shoot ProRes RAW internally to a CF Express type B card. Yes, you heard me correctly, ProRes RAW in camera. When shooting ProRes RAW, you'll be able to shoot at 5.7K up to 30 frames per second and DCI 4K up to 60 frames per second. The camera takes a CF Express type B card or a V90 SD card, but if you intend on shooting ProRes RAW, you're gonna have to stick to the CF Express or an external SSD, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but the GH7 does allow you to record to an external SSD just like the GH6 did. One of the big leaps forward for Panasonic cameras in general is their shift to a phase hybrid autofocus. After coming to Micro Four Thirds with the G9 Mark II, the GH7 finally features phase detect autofocus. This, in my opinion, is what I'm most excited to test because it's been a major pain point for previous models in the GH series. While Panasonic has and continues to make huge advancements and features that enhance their image quality, they've done so at the sacrifice of competitive autofocus. When it comes to image stabilization, GH cameras have always excelled. The GH7 features the same image stabilization as the G9 Mark II. It's 7.5 stops, five axis body IS, and dual IS2 will keep the image stable, not just in your wide focal lengths, but also in your telephoto as well. But okay, that's enough talking for now. Let's head over to the location and see what this thing is really made of. I'll see you guys over there. With the first few shots, I'm testing Panasonic's phase hybrid autofocus. I wanted to see how well it operated in the high contrast environments, even with a heavily backlit subject. The autofocus is doing a really fantastic job and I can't even express how refreshing this is. I've shot on Panasonic for several years now and while the autofocus was never so bad that I turned away from the company, I also knew I could never truly rely on it. The story changes here though. The autofocus is smooth, it feels natural when transitioning from one subject to another, and it tracks exceptionally well. Okay, we've been shooting on the GH7 for about two hours now, and we're just starting to run low on the internal batteries. So I am going to throw this thing on a rig with a external power source and I will see you guys in a minute. All right, so the GH7 is a camera that is loaded with features and functionality, but I'd be lying if I said it could do it all on its own. Now, technically you can shoot ProRes RAW 5.7K at 30 frames per second internally to a CF Express Type B card. However, since we live in the real world, it's really not practical to do so if you're shooting for long periods of time like you typically would be if you wanted to shoot ProRes RAW. First, if you intend on shooting this way, I strongly recommend getting a cage for the camera. That's gonna allow you to equip the camera with some external accessories 
that'll make shooting this way a lot easier. What we did is attach an external power supply to the camera on the rails in the back. That will give us plenty of battery life to shoot for long periods of time. There's plenty of power supplies available. What I recommend is either a V-mount or gold mount battery. And a lot of the newer ones today have USB output, which will interface with the dummy battery that Panasonic includes with the camera. Next, I strongly recommend recording to an external SSD. Now that's gonna be a lot more cost efficient to shoot on as opposed to a CF Express card or an SD card, because you can usually get larger capacity SSDs for the same price you can buy a CF Express card. All right, we are gonna get a few more shots using this rig and I will see you guys in a minute. The dynamic range boost feature is not something that's necessarily new to the GH series cameras. It was featured in the GH6. However, they've expanded on the feature in the GH7. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's exactly what it sounds like. When it's turned on, gain is applied at two different levels, a higher level to expand on shadow regions and a lower level to expand on highlights in the image. Where the GH7 expands on this feature is you aren't limited to certain ISO ranges when using it like you were on the GH6. The camera allows the dynamic range boost to operate at its full ISO range. When shooting in high contrast environments, this is going to be a lifesaver. Now the GH7 is also dropping with a new XLR module from Panasonic, the DMW XLR2. Now plug this guy in and you'll get two XLR and one 3.5 millimeter audio inputs capable of recording 32-bit flow audio that is synced with the video straight out of camera. Now the previous XLR1 unit was so crucial for getting high quality professional audio, but this update means you no longer need an external recorder to get 32-bit float audio. Now, if you intend on using this device, just be mindful of the rigging gear you're going to buy for the camera because the module needs to be attached to the hot shoe. It's gonna monopolize the top side of the camera. For example, in my scenario, I needed to remove the top handle if I wanted to use the unit, and that means displacing my SSD. However, that's just a limitation of one accessory, my unit specifically attached to the top of the camera, and that just happens to be where the module goes. You know, the more I was using this camera, the harder it was to find something I really hated about it. Panasonic has really made the camera as versatile as possible. Now there's a strong argument for this camera being viable in a professional cinema space. If your production is shooting on cinema cameras, especially those similar to the color science like a Vericam, I would see DPs and editors considering a camera like this because it has so many features that allow it to fit into a cinema workflow. Uh, time code, V-Log, 32-bit float audio recording, ProRes RAW, integration with frame IO, anamorphic support. I mean, for productions who may need a small B-cam or even an expendable camera, this could be a fantastic option for them. Now, Panasonic also included the real-time LUT feature that they debuted with their S9 camera. What this feature allows you to do is record with a baked-in LUT on your footage straight out of camera. This could be a great feature for some people who have a quick turnaround or frankly just don't really want to grade their footage but still want a really stylized look. What's different here though is that the GH7 allows you to separately apply the real-time LUT to the proxy footage and the original footage. You can apply the LUT to the proxy footage and maintain the integrity of your original footage at the same time. Now this is a huge workflow advantage because you can have proxies to show maybe a client or a producer that have more of like a polished look on them and maintain the integrity of your original files because during the post process your look is probably going to evolve or change from shot to shot and you want that leeway to be able to do that. Now for all the video features that the GH series always has, the GH7 does not fall short when it comes to photography. The camera expands on what the GH6 brought to the table, but this time with a far more reliable autofocus. There's a good variety of detection modes to pick from, including humans, animal, car, motorcycle, and what's new is train and airplane. You'll be able to capture photos at up to 60 frames per second in AFC and 75 frames per second in AFS with the electronic shutter. Now additionally, Panasonic added a new Leica monochrome profile, which I had a lot of fun with. It looked fantastic. 
What's more is the detection modes now allow you to switch between general subject detection and front facing detection, which could be really useful if you wanna capture something from a dead on front facing view or from the side. Now, with all of that being said, whether you're a videographer, a cinematographer, or a photographer, I really think the GH7 has something for you. It's a camera that wears many hats and wears them well. There's a lot of features in here and there are very few people out there who I think will use every single one of them, but you can tell that Panasonic put a lot of effort into making this camera extremely versatile. We wanna know what you think, Bill. Be sure to let us know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.